Welcome to the 2023 studio setup. It's been about a year and a half in the making. I'm excited to show you guys. Come on in. Today's video is sponsored by Storyblocks. Storyblocks provides unlimited downloads of royalty-free professional content for one predictable subscription cost. So you can say goodbye to expensive paperclip pricing. Anything you download with Storyblocks is 100% royalty-free forever with no restrictions on where you can actually distribute your finished projects. With Storyblocks, you can easily add motion graphics like title animations, overlays, logo reveals, and more to enhance the production value of your videos. And you can choose from thousands of pre-made professional templates for your favorite editing program. Templates are a great way to speed up your workflow so that you can focus on the content. We use Storyblocks to create a lot of the motion graphics templates in our YouTube videos like this title animation, and many of the sound effects and music we use in these videos also come from Storyblocks. So to get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price, head to storyblocks.com Parker or click the link in the description. So obviously it didn't like just randomly have a studio, it didn't just wake up one day and there it was, it took like quite a while like it was to be honest it was probably a decade in the making making videos picking that up getting clients building the business failing businesses <laughs> building new ones like there was a lot of ups and downs and it's really in the last year and a half that we were able to finally get a building make that investment it's honestly been the biggest asset for the company and so don't regret it whatsoever and i've had a lot of setups over the years my first setup was in my parents living room just like an old dell computer, HP computer, I can't remember, and some crappy monitor that we just already had at the house, like a dining table desk. Went to college, had a really crappy room, really crappy desk as well. After that, back in my parents' basement, had a slightly better setup, upgraded the computer, got married, moved into another basement, my sister's basement actually. I had the theater room as my office setup, and then we bought a house, made my basement my studio with my desk setup and everything else, and then about a year and a half after buying that house, we bought the building and then we had to completely revamp that. In addition to getting the building, we had to put probably about $150,000 into it just to get it to where it is. So you're going to see that. But I wanted to start the tour with the roadside because uh, we've been here for a year and a half and I just put this on last week. Okay, so when we got into the space, like I said, it was an early 2000s office building. Like, it's pretty bad. Actually, the floor was like this ugly rust color. The walls were an ugly cream color. The, the tiles on the ceiling, we still had those. We actually took those all out, painted everything, redid the entire flooring. And so when we got in here, it was actually really hard to envision like, okay, is this, is this actually going to work? Can we actually make this look really cool without spending a ton of money? Spoiler, we kind of had to. But here, first, uh, first stop on our journey is what did i name this guy steven i think i named him steven <laughs> this is from a dji video the new rs3 that we shot that was probably almost a year ago i think actually and then this is from one of our clients uh and we just <laughs> they sell dog accessories and so we needed a dog mannequin there'd be no other reason to have a dog mannequin so yeah he's kind of our security guard studio on the wall we got our benches for anyone to just sit when they get in here this is a pura it's an air freshener but it's like fully electronic, you can control it with your phone, so really cool. And the scent is like a cologne, so you walk in here and you just, ah, it just smells like a man's, man, man's warehouse. <laughs> and then this graphic up here, so I had an artist, his name is Miles. I just commissioned him to come in and actually make a mural on this wall because before this was all here, it was just a blank white wall, and this is a huge wall to not have anything on. And it was actually him who created Linus. Linus is this guy, he's all along the wall, but he's like the studio mascot. Uh, it took him just a couple of days and probably cost me like 1500 bucks, not too bad. And then we have our Polaroid wall. So whenever somebody comes in, we'll snap a photo with them and throw them on the wall because it's just fun to have that community aspect. Up next is the receptionist desk that doesn't really get used. We have our TV in the background just looping our studio show reel. This is about a year old. We should probably, we should probably make a new one. No one's in here. We kind of call them our sister company, 
they're, it's called Empire Media, and they basically do all the ad buying. So we create content at Studio, like we're just a content house, but we don't place the content. We don't post it on social for you. We don't post it as ads, whatever. Empire, that's all they do. So they place the content. So we partner with them on certain stuff. A couple bathrooms on the side. We got the studio icon painted on the wall. And then this room at the end here, it's it's honestly like changed so much. Like it's it's we bounced back and forth between a bunch of different things. So this half is the conference room. We have our whiteboard right here. This thing is huge. This is super heavy. Table right here is from IKEA. This is actually just a dining room table. These are some office chairs from Amazon. They get the job done, but don't recommend it. Fire TVs are just really cheap. It's Amazon's brand. I think these are maybe like three, four hundred bucks ish. Apple TV right here as well, so that we can actually have our meetings in here with the team. I can pull out my laptop and just cast directly to the TV. Okay, next. Get a good butt shot. Podcast room. I did my uh, episode with Parker in this room. It's mainly for like one on one podcasts. I know there's four chairs, but I usually throw two out of here. These mics are the PreSonus PD70s. These are actually really sim like comparable to the Shure SM7Bs that you see a lot in podcasts. The Shure SM7Bs are just, in my opinion, they're kind of overpriced. And these do, I think, as good of a job. These microphone arms are from Mountit. They're actually one of our clients. And so we shot some stuff for them and then kept the arms and threw them in here. Headphones are from Audio-Technica. These are the ATH M20Xs. I got these because these are like 50 bucks. I think 40, 50 bucks, super cheap, but I just needed a bunch of them. And so I got the cheaper ones. And when you're shooting a podcast, like they're comfy enough and the audio sounds great. Rodecaster Pro 2, I think it's kind of overkill for this production. Rode actually has like a smaller version of this that I probably would have gotten had it been out when I purchased this, but this is really great to actually control your audio levels. You can record directly to this interface, which is super nice. And you have a bunch of different like audio effects that you can play with. Little power brick right here. This is from Sateki. And so if you have a MacBook, you set your MacBook up right here, you plug it in to the Sateki, and then you plug in the Rodecaster via USB-C. And if you want to, you can hook up your camera via HDMI. Also to your computer, there's something called an Elgato Cam Link, which we have. I don't have it here right now, but sometimes I'll use that if I want to record directly into my MacBook with a software called Riverside, which is typically what I use for podcasts. Keeps your audio and your video in one. TV, I guess, TCL, like, I don't even know. It's just some cheap TV from Walmart. It's probably 150 bucks. And then lighting in here, this is a lantern. Uh, I think it's just a newer brand lantern, nothing crazy. And then the, the light is also newer. Background lights here is just uh, a couple tube lights from Nanlite. This is the first edition of their Pavo tubes. And then these accent lights right here are actually from FTF gear. Also from Amazon, I'll link them. These are really cheap ones as well. And then I just built a frame actually. I went to Home Depot and I bought some pine wood and then I cut it, nailed it together and just painted it a matte black. The paint in this room, I want to say this is like a limousine leather or something like that. Like it's, it's just a really dark matte black. Flexi spot desk, 150, 200 bucks. They're like super cheap desks. Connected to the podcast room is the talking headroom. This is a great place to do course content, YouTube videos. And so you just sit down, tripod right there, teleprompter if you want it. You can plug in your microphone however you'd like. You get your key light right there and then you just shoot it. We have the house lights on right now, so it probably doesn't look great. In this room, we have our sit-stand desk. The legs here are this titanium and those are from Uplift. And then the top is actually just a butcher block from Home Depot. The acoustic panel is on the side right here. Actually, let me, let me pop one off for you. So all this is some wood from Home Depot, just like a nice box. Yeah, I think it's called rock wool. And then we took some white canvas and just wrapped it around and then nailed it to the back. And so it kind of makes it look, at least from the front, <laughs> makes it look pretty clean. The paint in this room is little black dress. Like this is, what, what's funny is it's not really black in my opinion. This paint is kind of like a really deep navy blue. Plant right here, this is from nearly natural, I think. TV right here is just a cheap Samsung TV. I don't know what size this is, but mounted it vertically. These shelves are from Ikea. So I mounted them first before we painted this wall. And then I actually sealed the edges here and then painted the whole thing at once. So it kind of looks like one uniform piece. And then just some cheap plants from Ikea. Got some like thrift store cameras 
here just for props in the background. These tube lights on the side are actually just from Amazon. I don't really recommend them per se. I feel like they're a fire hazard, <laughs> but they're super cheap. And so if you want something cheap that's gonna get the job done, then it's a decent option. But I would probably recommend either the FTF gear lights or just like the Nanlite tube lights or something similar. It'll, it'll look a lot better. Tripod here is the Komen tripod. I don't know, cheap Amazon stuff. Again, I needed to buy like five tripods and so I just got some that looked relatively stable and were cheap. So these are about 150 bucks. The light here in this room is Aperture. This one is the, oh, this one's the 300D. Is this Jake's light? It's Jake's light, it's not even mine. I'm gonna pretend like it's mine. The light right here is a newer light. The soft box that we have, that rectangular soft box is an Ambitful, I don't even know, some Amazon brand. So other part of the upstairs here, actually there's, there's two more rooms. There's this main room and then there's my office. I'll do the office after this, but this is the like, co-working slash my employees like editing and just collaborative space. There's more than one way to actually create revenue for the company. Like it's not just us doing productions for different clients. We have a physical space and we can monetize that physical space. So the most obvious one that we could think of was renting out the warehouse, the psych wall, the different sets, stuff like that. And then the next thing we thought of was, what if we created a co-working space, like specifically for digital creators who want to have a space to come in and edit, you know, network, meet other awesome creators, uh, potentially even get hired for jobs. Like people have been hired because of the connections that they've made here in this space. And then be able to take clients in here and say, hey, let's shoot your podcast in the podcast room. Let's do your course in the talking head room. Let's shoot on the psych wall. Let's meet and collaborate and talk about this project in the conference room downstairs. And so it's been a really great uh, building just to do all this in. It's basically a WeWork for creators. And so it's been fun to have everyone in here. And I've met a lot of really cool people because of that. We have a couple different desk clusters for that co-working space. Uh, it looks like everyone's on vacation today, but Howie is here working hard, hardly working. So this is actually Nate Tehan right here. He rents a desk. And then this one's Jake Weisler. He rents a desk as well so they can collaborate. And I'm not gonna talk about everything on everyone else's desk. The one thing that matters on Jake's desk and it's a signed photo from me, from Christmas. Did you see this? You've seen this. Well, you sit right next to it. You've probably seen it. Do you want a signed photo too? Yes, please. Okay, well, do you have to wait till Christmas? These are just from Ikea. These are probably, I don't even know, maybe $75 tops like they're not super expensive the legs are pretty typical those are maybe five to ten bucks each and then we have the alex drawers which are really common these chairs these are from amazon as well the brand is habata and then obviously if people want they can bring in their own chairs but that's just kind of the standard here break area couch right here is from ikea this is a coffee table from probably amazon uh, we have an xbox here hooked up so if the guys want to play games on their breaks big tv this is like an 80 inch tv it looks ridiculous actually right here uh this is from ikea this entertainment center console thingy and then we uh, made a bar where you can sit at and eat your lunch look out the window it looks great okay last room from the upstairs is my office. What's up guys? You're on camera. So this is my business partner, Connor. Connor and I have a separated room where we can actually meet quickly and then get our work done. All right, we're gonna step out. Okay. You enjoy your tour. Thank you. you. Sorry to interrupt. So this space right here, Zugo, one of our former clients. And so we actually put one of their bikes upside down on this beam. I think it's safe. I don't know. Uh, it, I kind of a fun rendition of the studio logo. And then Connor's desk is just, it's the, actually the same flexi spot desk from the podcast room. I have a couple of those, some HP monitor, uh, his MacBook Pro, the OG. And then his monitorizer is actually from Grove Made. Uh, pegboard obviously being put to great use. His chair is from flexi spot. I never sat in this chair. I hate it. Uh, another Pura machine back here. Just pumping out some, some good smells. So Ergon Office, filing cabinet. I'm not gonna open the drawers because it's not organized at all. Couch right here, leather couch from Ikea. Another pegboard right here, big one. This is from Connor. He put a Just Do It poster with a frame on the wall because this was just blank before we needed something. He's a big golf guy. I'm not, I tried. This is where the magic happens. This is where a lot of the work gets done. I'm probably behind this desk 80% of the time I'm working. I'm, I'm behind this desk. 
We have an Ergon Office sit-stand desk here. That's what this Walna is. It has this little drawer here on the side, which is really nice. The desk mat I'm using right now is from Grove Made. I think it's the largest one they make. A couple Nike shoe boxes. I get asked about these actually quite a bit. There's no purpose for them, except that I think they look cool and they add like a splash of color on the desk. Got a few different books here. Uh, this is the one that I have in the intro video of Full Time Filmmaker. The main like piece of that video is I tell my story and then I talk about this book, Still Like an Artist, because it's such a great book for actually helping you overcome imposter syndrome. Got a few other books here, a little Hot Wheels car, and then human-centric headphone stand, and then these are the Sony WHXM04s. Keyboard, Logitech MX Keys Mini, great keyboard. Almost forgot my mouse, this is an MX Master 3. In my opinion, I think Logitech made the best mouse with the MX Master. I've had every generation of MX Master. I have the Monogram Creative Console, and so this is a really cool modular system, but you can uh, actually control different things. Like if I'm in Premiere Pro, and I wanna turn up some audio levels or exposure or whatever, I can use these dials, little shortcuts. Monitor stand right here, this monitor riser is from Human Centric as well. Um, they're actually one of our clients, which is why I have so many human centric things. And then it has this little desk shelf here at the bottom. And then the monitor I'm using, my main monitor, I get a ton of questions on this. I don't think they sell it anymore. I think it was discontinued and they have other models now. Out of the box, the color is not great, but if you actually go and adjust your settings, and match it, it looks really good. So that's what I've been using for a while. And then paired with it is the iMac, 2019 iMac, i9 actually. This back desk is from Human Centric. I have this as my side desk. It matches really well with the Ergon Office desk. And I actually set it up, I rigged it so I can do some top-down shots as well. The Polar Pro filter unboxing I filmed right here. Once again, a nearly natural plant, same one as the other room. And then just a couple of photos from Iceland on the wall. And then my bag is from DB. I've actually set it up with a Peak Design camera clip. And so you'll see our uh, camera gear later, but I can actually slide my smaller Sony on here and walk around and not have to hold it, just slide it on, take it off when I want to. The speaker that I'm using here, I sadly wouldn't recommend it for like any editors if you wanna have a really good sound system. Almost forgot, the chair is from a company called All Seating. It's actually sold by Ergon Office. Okay, so there's two ways to enter the studio, like the main warehouse studio. There's here up top or there's downstairs. I think downstairs is gonna be the most like epic entrance. Let's go downstairs. All right, the moment you've all been waiting for, Studio One. First thing we installed, we had installed, was the psych wall. So this is, I think, 20 by 20. And then this probably comes out also about 20 feet as well. We bought some prefabricated pieces because the most complicated part of building a psych wall is engineering the curve that goes from the floor up to the wall. And so we went and we bought some prefab curves from a company called, I think, Psych Wall Systems. And then we paid our contractors about $3,000 to come in, sand down the floor, to build a dummy wall right here, because this is all brick. So they built a wall, they have framing right here, and then they put some drywall on this, they smoothed everything out. They painted it all for us. And so total on the psych was like 7,000 bucks, which honestly for psych, that's not bad. We've used it so many times, it's paid for itself over and over again. So we just have a bunch of C-stands and a bunch of lights. These are just from newer. This lift actually isn't mine. It was loaned from a family member, like my, my brother-in-law's like, uncle or something like that. We use it for shoots sometimes. We can like bring it onto the psych wall. I can raise it up and I can get some really cool top down stuff. And so it's been a really good tool. On that note too, so the, the acoustic panels up top, I get so many questions about these. When we got into this building, you'd walk into the warehouse area and you literally, I couldn't have a conversation with you right here without wanting to just go crazy because the reflections, the reverb was absolutely insane. These are basically like fishing nets. I think they're technically called cargo nets. And then I bought these cubes uh, that are actually for like a trampoline park. <laughs> and so I bought several thousand of them and secured the nets 
threw all the cubes up there. Sounds much better. It's, it's definitely not perfect. Obviously there's a little bit of reverb. That's why I'm wearing this mic, so you don't really notice it too much. But for the most part, it does a really good job and it's so much better than it was. Also on the cycle, this is kind of random, but I didn't know about these until like a few months ago. But these are sticky pads. Obviously our psych is really dirty right now. We actually had blender bottle over here filming some stuff this last week. So they were using it and it ended up getting dirty, which is fine. That's what it's for. We'll just throw a new coat of paint on it. But to actually avoid having to paint this thing literally like weekly, we got one of these pads. And so before you walk onto the psych, you step on this, you kind of get all the dirt and grime off of your shoes and then you're okay to walk on it. You don't have any crap on your shoes anymore. Another thing we've done to actually keep people off of the psych when it's not in use is a stanchion. So these stanchions are nice. I just put one right here and then I have a couple of these. There's one on this wall. So I just pull that out, this belt thingy. So I can just throw that on right there and then I can grab the other one. It's all tangled up, but you get the idea. That's another thing logistically you got to consider if you ever get a psych wall is and it's not terribly expensive to upkeep it. Don't quote me on this. I'm pretty sure like the, the white color that we need that five gallon was like 150 bucks every time you paint to so use about a gallon, maybe even a little bit more. So 30 to 50 bucks every time you have to refinish the uh, surface. So it does add up, small price to pay. So the cage was the second thing that we put in here. It's really just fencing. It's like a good industrial fencing that they anchored to the concrete. And then you have like your typical chain link going around it. And then the only difference here between this and like a regular fence is you also have beams going across with the chain link on top. Yeah, it's not Fort Knox by any means, but it gets the job done. Like it keeps people from just coming in and touching our gear and, and grabbing whatever they want. We're actually like pretty lean, I think for a production company. We don't have a ton of stuff because we just don't need a ton of stuff. I feel like to make good content. This is all for the most part, like these bottom two at least shelves are just props. Props that we use for different clients, like we have a battle rope here. We have some plants. We have a turntable if we need to use that for product stuff. Dog treats, the dog actors that we have on camera sometimes. This is just random, I don't even know, just random stuff. This is the FPV drone that I crashed. A couple helmets, this is from another DJI video, the R4D video, that was a fun one. And then back here, I, I have nothing against Pelican. I think Pelicans are good cases. But personally, I really like Nanook. Basically a Pelican copycat, but they do a lot of things a lot better than Pelican, in my opinion. What's nice about the Nanook is that you can get these inserts. I know you can get them for Pelican too, but I feel like Nanook just does it better. Really good compartment, and I, I really like the way then it latches, it just feels a little bit more premium. And then I like the design that they have for the handles. This is a Pelican, it's, there's nothing inside, there's not even padding, it's really just like an et cetera case that we use and so we can throw lights in there quickly, extension cables, different stuff. We got our Craftsman tool chest. Craftsman, more like Craftsman, right? <laughs> We're not organized with our tools because we don't usually need tools. We just have a few that we have laying around here. So we'll throw them in here. Once again, we have our pegboard right here from Ikea. Um, again, not really being utilized very much. Why did I buy these? Why did I buy so many pegboards? There, there's so many things that I own, accessories, camera stuff that I just don't use very much anymore, frankly but I like to keep around in case we do need them. So down here we have stuff to rig up our camera gear. This is all of our lens filters. And so these are from Prism Lens Effects. Mainly what we've been using lately are the Polar Pro, the Helix Maglock system. And so we keep these in there as well. Again, audio equipment. We have some uh, monitors in here. Been using the Shinobi for different stuff. Like if I'm if I'm shooting a talking head, which I'll show you, I'll usually throw the Shinobi on there because it's just a really good filled monitor. And then depending on the shoot, I'll actually have a wireless monitor. And so if I'm holding the camera, for example, or my producer or another cameraman is holding the camera, I can connect this to the camera. This is a Vaxxis transmitter and it'll actually send the feed from that camera to this wireless monitor. And so I can turn that on. I can watch what my camera operator is doing. I can critique him if we need to adjust anything with settings or if we need to get a shot again. We got the RS2. I have two of these. Uh, Nate's on one right now. A couple of RS2s and then my tripod of choice, mainly because it's just so convenient. I don't do a lot of tripod work. Like I'm not panning and tilting and doing different movements on a tripod because I don't do that. I keep it simple with my tripod. This is just the peak 
design, travel, tripod. I don't know, it's small, it's compact, so it's kind of my go-to right now. Bottom shelf here, we have a Halloween fog machine, and then we just have some etc. tripods, light stands, etc. Nothing crazy, just your basic stuff. Moving up here, we got some gaff tape, charging station. Up top, we got a few more containers, just random cables, and then cameras and lenses. Our go-to camera is the Canon C70. That's what Nate is shooting on right now. Lenses, I got a bunch. I, I really only use the 50, the 35, the 100, and then there's a 12 millimeter Lawa lens back there. Those are honestly like my main four lenses that I've been using. 20 millimeter Sigma, 18 to 35. This is for a crop sensor, so I can't really use it on the C70 very well. This is a Sirui, how do you say that? Sirui? Siru? Whatever. I don't even know. <laughs> we have a bunch of black magics around the studio. I found personally that black magics work really well for podcasts and other like live stream events specifically because you can take a black magic camera and then you can take like the black magic atom mini which is a switcher and they work really well together my most recent camera purchase has been the sony zve1 i was actually really nervous to get this because i've never really shot sony but i just saw so many good things about the zve1 and i wanted to get specifically a really good youtube vlog run and gun camera so i picked this one up with the sony um the shotgun mic, I actually don't know. And the lens is the 2.8 16 to 35 G Master. That's the gear cage. On top of the gear cage, you'll see all of our soft boxes. If I ever wanna grab them, I just have to walk up the stairs and I can just pull one off. Super simple, but paper backdrops. We have a bunch of different brands that we use, but I think the main one is called Savage. Got a few mirrors around this place as well. We got a couple tables with mirrors. These also have the same lighting system as well. And uh, this is just kind of that, you know, get ready for your scene. Over here as well, we do have my talking head setup. I really like this like corner of the warehouse. Final piece to the Studio One warehouse setting is our stage. A uh, production studio doesn't really need a stage. You don't need that to run a creative agency or anything, but we knew that we wanted to do live events in this space, workshops, stuff like that. I have a workshop coming up in just a couple of weeks. And so we wanted a space that we could actually use for workshops specifically. And so we put this all together. We can sit down, we can have conversations with our guests, whoever's speaking on stage. And then we have all this room for seating. People can have a table and a chair, or we can just have chairs. The Jelly House video, the last YouTube video I did on the channel, we did shoot some stuff here in that setting and it turned out really, really good. Couches are from Ikea. Again, same headphones as before, same microphones as before. These arms for the microphones are from a company called Ore. This coffee table and this end table are from Amazon. So obviously the, the main like fixture here is that LED wall. The LED wall was not cheap and not easy whatsoever to install and figure out. This cost, just, just the LEDs, the panels, the wall, like the, the system that, that makes this actually all work, cost about 15, almost $15,000, which really isn't bad. Like it's, that's not bad. There's way more expensive LED walls out there, but it was definitely a little pricey. They had to build a dummy wall with wood they painted it black to actually be able to mount that LED wall to it. And so they made that and then I'm like, well, let's do some cool walnut slats as well. And so they put that all together and I think it actually ties the whole stage in really, really nice. Overall, I, I think it turned out really good. Good setup. Now controlling the stage, the LED wall, everything else, like it's this control center, command center right here. So I got a couple of monitors. These are just some cheap, Samsung monitors from Best Buy, they're like a hundred bucks or so. And then uh, everything runs actually on a Mac mini. I think it's a 2020 Mac mini M1. Parker Walbeck. Oh, should we watch the OG top eight smooth? Oh my gosh, baby face. Man, my first, this is my first big video with Parker. This thing took off. And the first week, I think it had half a million views. And then in a month, it was at a million. And then on top of this, again, we have a Rodecaster Pro 2. This is really just so we can control the speaker audio. We can have our microphone right here. So if someone's on stage, they wanna hold a mic, they can grab that. And we can also connect these mics wirelessly to the Rode Procaster 2 as well. And so I can be up on stage talking. I don't have to hold anything and I can just present with this mic. A big selling point, I think for us too, was having such a big garage. We actually had 
override films over. They have a huge Ford Raptor with a big like motocrane arm on it. And even them, they could fit through this garage just fine. And so it's nice to have this to actually back the car in. We can load up our stuff really easy. We can haul in whatever, you know, wood equipment we need to build sets and shoots, whatever we need to do. So it's, it's just nice to have this opening right here. Almost forgot, actually. We have blinds finally on these windows because you know, if, if we were to turn all this off, I know it's gonna be super dark, but with this remote double tap, I can actually pull all of these blinds down so just black out shades, and uh, this actually becomes a completely blacked out studio, and you can go in and set up your lighting however you'd like, and you don't have to worry about what time of day it is. All right, guys, thanks for joining me on my studio tour. Hopefully this inspires you guys to, you know, find the things that work for you, that work for your business, your production company, you as a creator, whatever you're trying to do, hopefully this gives you some ideas. And again, remember, I, I didn't just show up and all this was here. Like this is years of accumulation, a lot of hard work, a lot of failures, honestly, to get to this point, to have this space. If you have any further questions, as always, please let me know and we'll see you in the next video. Peace out.